The football tournament final is due in three days. And I have come down with high fever. The doctor says that a fever is only a symptom of a disease. I am normally quite fit. But I can't figure out which disease I could have got. This lesson gives you a better understanding of diseases and why we get them. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Define health and disease Classify diseases Describe the causes of diseases List the different infectious agents Explain the mode of entry of the microbes that decides the site of manifestation within an organ or tissue Describe the effect of the microbe on the target organ and describe the disease AIDS. Health is defined as a state of physical, mental and social well-being. Health is often affected by diseases. A disease is an unhealthy condition caused by microorganisms, improper diet, or it may be inherited. Disease literally means being uncomfortable. When you get a disease, the organ systems, such as the digestive system, stop functioning properly. This gives rise to symptoms like a headache, a cough, loose motions or a wound with pus. However, these symptoms do not indicate what the disease is. Okay, now I understand. But how do I know which disease is the cause of my fever? If I don't know, it will be difficult to treat it. Moreover, I have to get fit to participate in the final match. The team needs me. Physicians diagnose the disease based on observed symptoms and clinical tests. Let's now look at the types of diseases. Diseases are classified based on prevalence, occurrence or spread, and duration. Epidemics are diseases based on prevalence. These are outbreak diseases that attack many people at the same time and spread very quickly. I know about epidemics. A plague is an example of an epidemic. Diseases are divided into two types based on its occurrence and spread infectious diseases and non-infectious diseases. Infectious diseases are caused by microorganisms like bacteria, virus, fungi and protozoa. These diseases spread from one person to another through air, water, food, physical contact and insects. Hence they are also called communicable diseases. Diseases like high blood pressure and some cancers caused by genetic abnormalities are examples of non-infectious diseases. These diseases are caused by nutritional deficiencies. They do not spread from one person to another. Hence they are called non-communicable diseases. Here's the classification of diseases based on duration. Diseases that last for a short period are called acute diseases. The common cold that lasts for a few days is an example. Diseases that last for a lifetime are called chronic diseases. Elephantitis
and diabetes are examples. I have a bad cold too. That means I'm suffering from an acute disease now. The good thing is that it will last for only a few days. Signs or symptoms give a definite indication of the presence of a particular disease. This baby has vomited quite a few times today. What could be the causes of this repeated vomiting? Now let me think. The cause of vomiting could be a bacterial infection. Bacteria could have entered the baby's system through unclean drinking water. So, lack of clean drinking water becomes a first level cause of the disease. What else could be the causes of this disease? The baby might not be well nourished. Okay. So lack of good nourishment becomes a second level cause of the disease. The baby might also be genetically more likely to suffer from vomiting when exposed to such bacteria. Good. Then, genetic abnormalities could be the third level cause of the baby's disease. Are there other disease causing agents like bacteria? Apart from bacteria, there are viruses, fungi, protozoa, and worms that cause diseases. These are called infectious agents. These agents absorb the digested food from the host and in turn cause diseases. Bacteria are unicellular organisms visible only under the microscope. Diseases caused by bacteria are typhoid, cholera, tuberculosis and anthrax. Staphylococci bacteria cause acne or pimples on the skin. A virus is the smallest organism that can be seen through an electron microscope. Some examples of diseases caused by viruses are the common cold, influenza, dengue fever, and AIDS. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Virus or SARS virus infects the human cell and releases new viruses that infect other cells nearby. Fungi are microscopic and multicellular organisms. Skin infections are commonly caused by fungi. Protozoa are parasitic organisms that can be seen only under the microscope. Protozoan organisms like Leishmania cause Kalahazar disease. Manifested with fever and enlargement of the liver. Trypanosoma cause sleeping sickness. Manifested with confusion. Sleeping during the day and staying awake during the night. Worms are macroscopic organisms that localize in the intestine of the host and cause diseases. Worms cause intestinal infections and lymphatic infections like elephantitis. Do these infectious agents attack a specific part of the body? Different infectious agents or microbes target different parts of the body. If microbes enter from the air via the nose, they localize in the lungs and cause tuberculosis. If microbes enter through food or water via the mouth, they stay in the gut lining and cause typhoid. If microbes enter the liver, 
like viruses do? They cause jaundice. Microbes that cause malaria enter through a mosquito bite, go into the liver and later destroy the red blood cells. Let's see how the symptoms tell us all about the target organ infected. If the symptoms are cough and breathlessness, the lungs are the target. Jaundice is a symptom of the liver, which is also the target organ. If the symptoms are headache, vomiting, fits or unconsciousness, the brain is the target. Let's look at a disease that has spread all over the world. AIDS was first recognized in the USA in 1981. AIDS is caused by a virus named Human Immunodeficiency Virus or HIV. Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome or AIDS is so called because the AIDS virus breaks down the body's immune cells and organs that comprise the immune system. As a result, the patient becomes susceptible to infections. The patient's body can no longer fight off minor infections like the common cold, which leads to major infections like pneumonia, diarrhea, with blood loss, etc. Hence, HIV or AIDS infected people die due to these major infections. 